In this video tutorial, we're looking at Padlet, an easy and straightforward way to engage your students in online discussions. You will learn how to create Padlets or discussion boards, how to invite students to engage with you and other classmates, and finally, how to moderate online discussions which are happening in Padlet. First thing you need to do is to head over to padlet.com, sign up if you don't have an account, or log in if you already have an account with Padlet. Once you've signed in or created an account, you'll be taken to a Padlet home screen. Uh, because we don't have any Padlets yet, our library is empty. Today we're looking at how to create a Padlet. So click on Make a Padlet. Padlet lets you select between different layouts. If you're not sure which layout you want to choose, you can always click on Preview uh, to see what the layout will look like in real life. Today, we're going to stick with the simplest layout on Padlet, Wall. Once you've selected layout, click Select. First thing we want to do is give our Padlet a title and description. You can also choose uh, an icon which will appear next to your Padlet's title right here in the top left corner. The address is a unique link to your Padlet which you can use to invite people to join your Padlet, but we will talk about how people join a Padlet a little bit later. Appearance will enable you to customize your Padlet, the, the wallpaper, the scheme and font. Now let's have a look at posting and some of the features that you want to make sure you turn on. First, attribution. Display author name above each post. I normally turn this feature on because I want to see who of my students posted what. New post position, it's up to you whether you want a new post to appear at the top or at the bottom. Comments, because we want to use Padlet for online discussion space, I normally leave comments on. Reactions is a nice way to give your students a chance to react to your post or post of their classmates. I normally uh, select stars. Let's have a look at content filtering a little bit later when we talk about moderation. Now, once you've set up your Padlet, we're going to click next and start posting. Let's try and create our first post. To create a first post, we're going to click on this plus or pencil button and enter the title of our post. So for my first post, I'm going to use the upload function and upload a file from my computer. I'm going to select this picture and ask students if you could be one of the people in the picture, who would it be and why? But let's create another post. Click on the same icon. For my second question, I'm going to use one of the features from the drop down menu. I'm going to doodle. Let's do this and ask students what could this drawing be. And a couple of things you can do once the post has been created. You can either delete the post, change the color of your post, copy the post. If while creating a Padlet you realize that uh, the layout is not suitable for your discussion board. In this case, for example, I cannot move my posts freely uh, because we've selected a layout of wall. You can always click on this three dots and change format. Select canvas. This will not delete our post. It will stack them together. But now I'm free to move my posts around in whichever place I want. There are a couple of settings you want to set up before you invite students. First, go to share, change privacy settings. First thing you want to select is what is the privacy settings of your Padlet? Is it uh, public so everybody can find it on Padlet platform? Is it secret and only people with link will be able to access it? Do you need to password? I normally keep it on secret and share link with my students. Another important thing that you need to make sure you select correctly is visitor permissions. When you invite your students to this Padlet, they will be visitors and there are a couple of options here. Can write means that your students will be able to create posts, much like what I did right here. I've created those posts. The question that you need to ask yourself is, do you want your students to create posts or do you only want them to reply to your posts? In my case, I normally create posts myself and I just want my students to be able to read those posts and comment or reply to them. I don't want them to create new posts. I just want them to read and respond. So the option that I normally stick with is can read. So once I have a secret and can read, I'm going to click save. Now my Padlet is ready to be shared with my students. So a couple of options how you can share 
your Padlet. Copy a link to the clipboard will generate a link which you can now share with your students to invite them to this Padlet. There's also a convenient feature of sharing Padlet through the Google Classroom, which will basically take this the same link and post it on your Google Classroom. I'm going to try and use this feature today. If you're not using Google Classroom, simply share this link with your students. But I'm also going to show you how to share Padlet through Google Classroom. So I'm going to click on Google Classroom. Padlet will take me to Google Classroom selection screen. Now I need to choose a class which I want to assign Padlet to. Under action, I normally create an assignment. Now we've starting editing our assignment on Google Classroom. Once you have title, instructions and other options are ready, click assign. Let's now switch to student view to see what they will need to do to participate in your Padlet. When your students log into the Google Classroom, they will see a new assignment. To access your Padlet, they will need to click on the link. The link will take them to your Padlet. As a student, you can see your teacher's posts. To answer teacher's question, your student will need to tap on Add Comment. Once comment is ready, it's important to click on the arrow for the comment to be posted. A comment will appear under your post. Now we have two comments from two students. This is student number one, this is student number two. You can notice that while one student has his name, well, this is appears to be name of the iPad I'm using, another student is anonymous. This student has an account with Padlet. And that's why when they create a post or a comment, their name is displayed under their response. This student, however, doesn't have an account. On their screen, they have an option to sign up and log in. I strongly suggest you encourage your students to sign up so when they make a comment, you can see their name. Let's talk a little bit about some of the moderation that you as a teacher can do to make sure that things don't get out of hand. First thing you can do as a teacher to moderate online discussions is to hover over the comment of your student and click on these three dots. You can either edit the comment or you can delete the comment altogether. Another thing you can do to control your students' behavior while they're using Padlet is to require approval before they make a post. We can click Save and go to Students View and try to create another post. When we click Post, you'll notice that this uh, student's second post is now waiting for approval. Post is only viewable by the student who has created the post and you as a teacher. Another student won't be able to see this post until the time you click Approve. Once the post has been approved, all students on the discussion board will be able to see and interact with it. Now when we know how to create Padlet walls, create posts, invite students, let's talk a little bit about some of the advanced features of Padlet. The first feature that I normally use is Remake. Remake feature enables you to copy the Padlet as a template. It gives you an option to either only copy the design or color features of your Padlet or also copy all the posts of this Padlet. When you copy designs and copy posts, a new Padlet will be generated. This is now a remake of our first Padlet. Our, our design is in place, our posts are in place. Uh, what is not copied though are the comments. You can notice that now all the posts are without any comments. It's a really nice feature to have if you have multiple classes and you want to have a separate Padlet for each of your class. Another advanced feature that you might want to have a look at is invite another teacher. To invite another teacher, we're going to click add members. I'm going to type MS416. So once you do that, you can assign a separate role to this member. Now remember how we set the privacy settings for visitors. Now this particular member can have a, a privilege to administer this Padlet. You normally don't want to give your students administrative rights, but this could be uh, an important feature. If you want to work on one Padlet with another teacher, so both of you can work on a Padlet for your students. So let's try and sum it up what we've learned today. First thing, we've looked at how to create Padlet discussion boards and populate them with posts or questions. The second thing we've looked at is how to invite students to access our Padlets and engage with our discussion boards. After that, we've looked at some of the moderation features, how we can control what is happening in our Padlet. Finally, we've looked at some of the advanced features of Padlet. 
I thank you for your time. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I'll see you next time.